Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Viceroy, which uh, don't be afraid by the Russian Bach, which I, I think is pronounced like Hemitchik or something like that, but this is not, well this is published by Russian publisher Hobby World, it's available in Russia right now in Russian, but it is going to be on display at Essen 2014 playable in English. And the publishers have sent me an early demo copy of their English version of the game, which is called Viceroy, which I guess is what that word is rush is in English. And I'm going to try and run through the game so you can find out whether it might be a game you're interested in. And if you're at all like me, I think it will be because Jen and I, we were really blown away by this game. We like it a lot. It gives you a lot to think about. It's very fun. It's very fast. It's very fluid. And I'm going to try and demonstrate that today. Okay. Now at the beginning of the game, I'm going to be playing a two-player game here. Everybody gets, oops, I have one too many. I have two short. Everybody gets two bucks in each of the four colors, uh, gemstones they're called, and that's the money of the realm. They, they all have equal value, it's just that they're in different colors. So everybody gets two greens, two yellows, two blues, and two reds. And sorry, colorblind folks, as near as I can tell, they're, I mean, you're going to be kind of SOL because I, my understanding is colorblind folks cannot tell the difference between a green and a red. So that makes the game pretty tough to play. You're going to have to take a Sharpie and put markings on a bunch of the cards and all these tokens. Hopefully, before the game goes into a wider distribution, the publishers will be able to do something to make it a little bit more colorblind friendly. But anyway, that aside, everybody starts with two of each of the four colors. And also, everybody starts with two characters. I ended up with the Poisoner and the Enchantress. Now the situation is we are Viceroys, competing Viceroys in a fantasy kingdom and we are trying to, you know, weave Machiavellian plots and intrigues and trying to become the most influential person in the kingdom by building what is called our Pyramid of Power. And the way we do that is we get a whole bunch of cards over the course of this game and we put them down such that they start to form a pyramid. Let me just grab a few cards from this draw pile to represent. Over time I got more cards. So I've, I have gotten the Poisoner and the Enchantress on my side and the, the two of them next to each other are forming the base of my Pyramid of Power. And later on I get the Chieftain. Oh, isn't that nice? And I put him here. And he's on the second level. And, isn't that cool, all three of these cards create one solid yellow which means I immediately get another yellow gemstone. So I get a little bit richer for pulling that off. Plus, a solid color will be worth points at the end of the game. And then I keep building my... Let's see, and I, I didn't quite match the colors there, but I really built the Arcanist here because I needed to get some more money. And then, uh, and that opened up so I could build the Factor, or whatever that is, which got me some science. And then, I hey, I built the Brigand, but I didn't want to build the Brigand because he was going to make... So I might save him to build him later because if I can get another green here, then I could have a solid green. But that means I need to get two more here before I could build the brigand. So over the course of the game, we are building our personal pyramids higher and higher, wherever possible. It's not necessary, but it's always a good idea if you can to try to build in such a way that you make complete um, same colored circles as well, because that'll get you more money as you go. And believe me, you go broke very quickly in this game. But more importantly, every time you pull somebody into your pyramid, you immediately, well, you have to pay to do it. You have to grease some palms to get them into position and or, you know, or bribe them so that they're on your side, but they will immediately get you a benefit. If you put somebody on the bottom level of your pyramid, you have to pay the bottom level. In this case, I'd have to pay one green gemstone, and my reward would be four gemstones of any color I want. If I want the Enchantress, I'd have to pay one redstone to get her on the bottom, but then she would get me one of these little guys, which means I get two additional points for every magic I get at the end of the game. And then say I got the, the Factor here onto the second level. He, to put him here, cost me a green and a yellow, but he gives me a science token, so I'm starting to work on science. Getting this brigand up to the third floor cost me three gems. A yellow, you know, I had, I had to bribe him quite a bit, a, a yellow, a green, and a blue, but he will give me a bonus. At the end of the game, every completed circle I've got that's red, I don't have any, I almost have one there, but every completed circle is worth two additional points for having gotten him up, getting on this level. So, a big part of the game is all about trying to get the right characters at the right time to match the right colors so you can, you know, build the most profitable and successful pyramid. But you also have to watch your money because things get very expensive very quick. The higher up they go, the more they the more they cost. 
But before we start doing any of that, building our pyramids, at the beginning of the game we have two cards. One of them is going to get built for free, and then the other one goes into our starting hand that we'll add to over the course of the game. And now these two characters, I get the Enchantress, which like I said gives me that, that um, bonus points for magic. And, or I could get the Poisoner, who gives me more money. I think I want that. I'm going to want to start the game with a little bit more cash. So I'm going to build him, or not build him, you know, install him for free at the beginning of the game, and I get four. And you know what? At the beginning, I'll just take one of each color, because I haven't really, I don't know if there's a color I need to be strong in yet, so I'll just grab one of each. So that was pretty nice. Now while I'm doing that, Jen is doing the same. She has to make a choice. She's got the Cutthroat and the Veteran. The Cutthroat would give her three victory points. But the veteran give her three bucks. I think she cares more about excess money right now as well. Because like I said, you can go bra broke fast. So Jen played this guy for free. And she gets three. And what the heck? She'll take, uh, she'll take everything but a blue. Um, she doesn't need a blue to, for the cutthroat unless she tries to get him up to the top floor. So, But she does need reds or yellows to get him onto higher ones. So she'll go for red, yellow, and what the heck, a green. Okay. So we've done that. And now, after we've done that, everybody starts the game with two law cards as well. So everybody gets some law cards. And so my starting hand has the Enchantress, New Laws, a law card called New Laws, and the Commonwealth League, while Jen's secret hand is the Cutthroat, Border Fortification, and Decree on Guilds. And all of these cards can be built to our pyramid, and the higher they get built, the better they are. But we'll start actually demonstrating that now by beginning to play. Now, uh, every round, and I believe, let's see, I think there's 12 rounds over the course of this game. So I guess you can consider this like it takes place over one year. There's 12 months. Every month, every round, we put out four new characters in the display. The Colonel, the Swordsman, the Brewer, and the Helmsman. And now we are going to engage in an auction, a simultaneous bid auction to see if we can get these characters. And before we bid, we better choose the right one. Now I got to say right off the bat, I'm going to go for the Colonel. Because if I can, there's a couple of reasons. Well, yeah, if I can get him on the bottom floor, you'll notice his bottom floor power is what's called a permanent or an infinite gemstone. He will give me, for the rest of the game, the Colonel will get me one red gemstone every round for free. That's huge. That's just permanent money making. Plus, you notice he's got this yellow corner? That means he fits my prisoner pretty well, and so I'm starting to build a yellow circle. So he's a really nice fit for me. Now, Jen would like to get him, too, because that, that infinite, re that infinite you know, stone is a big deal. It, you know, if I build this, once he's put in place, it would cost me a red to, to install him, but then I get to take a red and permanently put him on him, and he will always generate a red for me. And I've taken one red out of the supply. There's a finite number of gems in this game. In a two-player game, there's not very many at all, and I've just started to monopolize red. So it's very powerful to do that. But anyway, these other guys, this guy would get three more, if you put him on the ground floor, three more money, three more money, or two money and two victory points. And now, that's a pretty nice one for Jen, because you know, he would fit her yellow over here. He'd fit my yellow as well. And in fact, actually, the brewer would fit Jen's green, the helmsman would fit, in fact, actually, the colonel doesn't fit Jen color-wise at all. Even putting him on the second floor, Jen doesn't have a green on the first floor. But if Jen looks at her future colors, she can see she's got the green on killed, so he might fit that later on, etc., etc. But anyway, so everybody has to look at what's available. Everybody makes a simultaneous bid. Everybody reveals at the same time. Now, if you choose to pass, you don't want to get anybody if you reveal an empty hand. What that means is you didn't, you didn't recruit anybody that turn. You get to take three, and sometimes more, depending on your situation. You can take three or more gems to get more money for a future round. But let's see. Now, I know. I already know. I'm going to reveal. Let's see yellow because this guy is in the yellow slot and I want him. I want that, that infinite gemstone. So everybody reveals at the same time, I'm going to reveal yellow. But now what is Jen going to do? She would like him too. So I think we both revealed at the same time and we both revealed yellow. And now that's bad news because that means we tied and we both lose our money just like that and we go on to a second round of bidding. And uh, we could both bid yellow again, but see, the interesting thing is, before anybody revealed, 
what the rules say, people can talk openly about what it is they want to grab or what they think other people are going to do, and people can make agreements before the bidding starts. I could have warned Jen, hey, you know what? Just so you know, I'm going for the Colonel. If you go for him, you're wasting your money because I'm going to go for him. But neither Jen nor I did. We didn't talk, and instead we both revealed a yellow, which means we both lost, and now we move on to the second round. There are up to three rounds of bidding. You either go until you get somebody, you pass, or the three rounds are up, in which case you pass because you can't do a fourth round. Remember, and if you pass, you get some money back. So that was a bummer. Well, before we do our second bid, I'm just gonna tell honey, honey, FYI, I'm going for yellow again. So if you wanna, if you wanna go broke on yellow, you can, you can fight me. And Jen might say, well, I'm going for it too. Or you know, we might negotiate, we could talk about stuff. But let's see, who's gonna blink? Am I gonna blink? No. I, well, I know I got one more dollar than Jen at the beginning of the game, so I'm a little bit richer than her, so I'm willing to go a bit longer. I tell, I warn her, honey, I'm going for yellow again. And now Jen's going to decide, is she going to go for yellow and bankrupt herself, or is she going to blink and go for something else? Because these other things are nice too. Hmm, let's see. Like for instance, it'd be good just to do the brewer and the helms or the helmsman and just get more cash. It's great that I get one permanent. Um, redstone, which means for the next 11 rounds, because the game is 12 rounds long, I, I basically I'm getting a, 11 reds, but Jen could just get three more of her own right now and just have them in the short term, whereas me, I only get a slow drip feed over the course of the game. So maybe she wants to back off that and do something else. Let's see. Well, if so, which one would she want to build? And also, if she's only thinking about building on the ground floor, well, I mean, she has to put a second thing on the ground floor before she can build to the second ground floor. But she also needs to think about these things. If you know, if she gets them up higher in the sky, like um, getting a swordsman up to the third level, which will cost three gems, will let her draw either, blindly, another character or another law. So that could be really cool, too. And speaking of her laws, I haven't even looked at where her laws are. Decree on guilds. Put this card underneath any character card. All right, yeah, this is the doubler. This is very, very cool. Like, say at some point, Jen gets the... Or let's say Jen does get the colonel. And it doesn't put him on the ground floor, but puts him on the third floor. So Jen gets to put... Where is it? You know, Jen gets to put eight victory points on him because Jen put him on the third floor. Jen could, in a later turn, do a decree on guilds, which gets played underneath here. And it doubles whatever's on there. So that would basically turn this guy into a 16-point guy, which would be very, very cool. Jen's got that law, basically. All right, but anyway, I haven't even bid yet. And then her other one, the border fortification. She can either get a shield, which will protect her from attacks at the end of the game during final scoring. And plus, it can be part of a very, very big... There's a set collection element of this game, too. For every shield, science, and... Um, what was it? Magic, I think? Where is it? The... Uh, the complete set. For every shield, science, and magic you get, you score 12 points. So getting shields can be a big, getting a lot of shields can protect you and can also be a nice part of set collection. Um, or, oh, Jen can get herself an infinite gemstone anytime she wants. So I don't think she's going to fight him, fight the colonel so much because she can make her own infinite gemstone. So what does she want instead? I think she just wants more gemstones then. Or does she want two victory points and two gemstones? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, because if she does this, she gets this, then she can put this on the second floor, and boom, she's made herself a nice yellow. So that's pretty cool. So I think I revealed a yellow, and Jen revealed on the second round of bidding a red. So hooray! We both pay, and I end up getting the colonel. Jen got the swordsman. Okay, so these get added to our hands. Now, once the auctions are over, one way or the other, any characters who didn't get bought get moved up here. They aren't removed from the game yet. They're, they'll still be available for bidding in the next round, and in the meantime, we put out four new characters. Three, four. So next round, there are going to be six characters on offer. And if you know both Jen and I bid green, it's not over. We don't instantly lose our money because if we can come to an agreement of, okay, you know what, I'll take the brewer, you take the hermit. If we can have an agreement, it, we can both get a green. But if we don't agree because we both want the hermit really bad, then we both lose our green money. So next round, green and blue are implicitly a little bit safer to bid on. But in the meantime, we're done with the auction. Now we go on to the building of our pyramid. And during this, we can play up to three cards from our hand to our pyramid. Although that gets pretty expensive, depending on how high it gets built. And we all do it simultaneously. We all play our first card simultaneously. Now I am going to play my, my colonel simultaneously. So I played him, and that cost me one red. 
Actually, we all put it face down, and while we're all waiting, so this is what I'm playing, and what is Jen going to play? She will go on ahead and she'll play her swordsman she just got. Right, okay. So we both play, we both reveal, and we do them at the same time. I'm paying one red to put this kernel here, but my reward is immediately take one of the reds out of the supply, so the supply is now, reds are now implicitly more rare, a, a little bit, and I now or get a permanent free red for any future builds. I can use this once per round to build to my pyramid. Jen, meanwhile, she got a swordsman. She had to pay a green to put this swordsman on the ground floor of her pyramid. And she immediately gets two points and two bucks. So where's her two points? Here's the two points she gets, puts it on the swordsman, and two bucks. I think she'll take a red because she knows now that reds are getting a little bit more rare. Does she just want to take two reds? Eh. Let's see, well, what else does she need to build? Yeah, with that, she'll take two reds because the reds are getting rarer. Because I just took one basically out of circulation. So now that was it. That was the first of up to three rounds. We can both now play a second card face down and reveal at the same time. Do I want to play a second one? Let's see, now, if I get my Enchantress into play, if I put her on the second level, I'll get five bucks. It'll cost me two, but I'll get five. And it'll only cost me one because the red cost will be taken care of by the Colonel. So for one green, I could get, I pay one and I get five, so I could net four bucks. But as you can see, I would not be making a solid yellow color. Now instead, I could put this new law here and make a solid yellow. And this new law, draw three laws from the law deck and add them to your hand, then return any two law cards from your hand to the top of the deck in any order you like. So I could maybe get better laws. I'm happy with my laws, though. I would like to do this for the yellow, but if I get another yellow, like for instance, if I put the Enchantress here, she'll get me this, and then I've got a place to put my yellow. Yeah, that's better. So I'm going to build a second one. Although, yes, I'm going to build a second one. Okay. And... Um, it cost me one red, but my one red will be taken care of by the Colonel. Thanks, Colonel. So now I cannot use this again. Uh, I, you know, I, I've used my one red one time this round, and the be benefit from her, from now on, Magic Scrolls are worth two points to me at the end of the game. So I've started, and I've got two places to put a yellow law on my second level now. Okay. <sighs> All right, and so anyway, and Jen, at the same time, she could be thinking about her second thing. She's got this yellow. She could put it up here, and that would allow her to get her own infinite gemstone or take four gemstones of her choice or put a shield down and start to protect herself and build up a set. I think she's going to do that. So she put down that she was going to play a law, and she revealed it, and boom. She'll put it here. And now the nice thing about laws is it doesn't matter how high you put them up on the pyramid. They're free. So it's generally wise, if you can, to um, you know, bear that in mind that you maybe you want to put him up higher because you can. I put him up on the third level and it's cost me nothing. That means I've created a platform to put somebody on the fourth level. But I'm going to do him right away, really early, because, hey, I got a full yellow. And that means I immediately make one yellow buck and I get to do one of these. I can take a shield. I can get an infinite gemstone or I can take four gemstones. Now, I'm tempted to do an infinite gemstone and make it a red. And now, there are no more reds in the supply. And I, I think Jen did this basically to counteract the advantage. So Jen's got four red gemstones. She's got a permanent red gemstone. Jen has really monopolized the red gemstone industry in this game. And now, we go into the third and final round. Because remember, you can build up three things. You don't have to. Maybe you want to save your money to do an auction next round. But if I wanted now, I could put one of these laws into play. And if I put this here, it'd be getting me another yellow buck and that whole thing about being able to draw other cards. And um, let's see, or my commonwealth. I could put this, although I would not be completing a circle, so that'd be kind of wasteful, but it would get me magic. And remember, magic is worth two points to me. Or I could get science, or I could get four gemstones of my choice. Hmm. Do I want to build a third thing? And does Jen want to build a third thing? Jen's thinking about... Yeah, okay, well, first of all, let's come back to me. Jen will play this. She played this in secret, um, and so she's waiting to see if I'm going to play something. <sighs> so this is going to let me draw three. So I'll, I'll end up with one additional law card. But you know what? I don't think I'm going to do it right now. I'm not going to save I'm going to save this because, you know, maybe I'll wait and see if I can get the sergeant because he's a yellow. So I'm, I'm going to pass. Jen, however, is playing a third thing, and it's the cutthroat, and she's going to put it on the ground floor. And you can see it matches this green quite nicely, and it costs her a red, 
Jen will use her infinite gemstone to do this, and she just scored three more points. For free, basically, because of her infinite gemstone. And she has now built a good spot to build a green. And you can see there's a nice green hermit here. So Jen might want to go for the hermit and slap him down here and get her first science. Although if she does that, she knows she'll need one green to buy to recruit him and then two blue to put him into position. All right, and so at the end, and so that's it. Now we've finished the first round. So we're starting the second round and we're gonna go right into the auction again. And as you can see, there's six things out and then we'll start building and the game will continue. So if you'd like to watch a little bit more, you can hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes to extended playthrough, or you can go to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.